Welcome to Warhammer Stuff. So today we have our first game of 10th edition and it is Imperial Knights versus the Gene Stealer Cult. So let's go ahead and check out the armies. Yes, this is our first 10th edition game uh, that's recorded. So like the video if you like the video, share if you want to share it, comment if we get anything wrong because there's a lot of that going around now. When we get something wrong. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and we'll see you again later. Alright, so for Gene Stealer Cults, uh, a few things to note, uh, there's some bugs here and there and some of these vehicles will not load in, so these are just the basic shape model, um, had some issues with the Acolyte Wardens, but, or Acolyte Iconographs, whatever those things are called, but yeah, so that's why those are white. So getting into it, Warlord is the Patriarch, uh, yeah, he, <laughs> he's just the Patriarch, I have a Primus, I have two Nexoses. Uh, they each have Warlord uh, traits. Uh, oh, as the Patriarch does as well. He has Prowling Adjutant. The Nexoses, I can't recall. They have uh, one of them has the Infiltrate and Regain CP, and one of them has the My Opponent uh, Stratagem Cost Plus One CP uh, ability. Then we have an Abominant. We have two Hybrid uh, uh, I the Icono class guys, the guys with the banners and stuff. The Grant Feel No Pain, and we have one Biophages. Then on to troops, or battle line. We have a 20-man unit of neophytes with four Webbers and four seismic cannons and an icon. And the leader has power weapon. And the same thing over here. Then we have a 10-man unit of that with two Webbers and two seismic cannons and an icon. And the leader, all the leaders have power weapons. Then we have two units of acolytes and all of them have uh, hand flamers and the leaders have their special melee weapon things <laughs> then we have three squads of acolytes but uh, basically uh, one guy has demolitions uh, one guy has heavy weapons uh, uh, two have flamers and the sergeant has the melee and flamers that's essentially that and then on to not really elites anymore but not battle line hybrid metamorphs they all have hand flamers uh, and the leader has uh, his metamorphic mutations and stuff and they have an icon leader and stuff like that so hold on how is there 11 dang it well whatever so there's 10 of them because you can't have 11 then I have a unit of gene stealers pure strength then I have a unit of aberrants with an aberrant hypermorph and two goliath rock grinders and that is my army all right, you guys, so um, my list is pretty straightforward. It's knights, um, so I decided instead of going with like uh, a mix of different of like the bigger guys, I figured I would try having a lot more units this time and have just one major um, knight. So I went with the Knight Crusader, uh, and so he has the Storm Spear Rocket Pod uh, add-on since you can only have one now. Uh, and then he has the rest of the default war, war gear. So the Gatling Cannon, the Flamer, the Melted Gun, the Thermal Cannon, the Titanic Feet. Um, I also gave him the Mysterious Guardian um, Enhancement, which uh, first off, he it gives him the Deep Strike ability. But also at one, uh, one time during the game, if he's not in engagement range, he can basically disappear at the end of the opponent's turn and then come back in my reinforcements phase more than nine inches away um so basically he can re-deep strike essentially um and i figured that might be a nice mobility option i don't know if i'll use it but you know um but other than that i have six helverins they all have the exact same war gear so they have a melta gun two armager war um blah, 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 auto cannons um, and that's pretty much it. They have an anti-flyer thing now when they're in uh, my deployment zone or within range of an objective marker that I control. So that's kind of cool, but I, I don't know if that's actually going to be relevant anywhere. Um, and then I have the Warglaives, which um, have the melted guns, they have thermal spears, and they obviously have the melee weapon, the chain thing. So when they charge, their melee weapons get uh, sustained hits which is, I believe, on sixes to hit, uh, they get an additional attack. Yes. Um, so we'll see uh, what it's like to have more units than less uh, with knights. I'm not really sure, um, but I think it'll be really cool. Uh, especially, it also keeps the list really simple for me because we just started 
playing 10th. I think this is, this is my second game of 10th edition. Um, so it also saves me the trouble of like, what does everything do? Uh, and so that is 1,940 points uh, of knights. All right, so for this mission, we got the deployment Search and Destroy, and we got the mission card that makes us draw two more, unless it's Chilling Rain, in which case we end up with three <laughs> new ones. And so we ended up with Secret Intel and Box Static. And so in each player's command phase, you can draw an additional secondary mission and discard one of the active secondaries. So, pretty interesting. And Vox Static. 2 CP for reroll and new order stratagem. So, that's going to be harsh. Mm. All right, then. Mm. Primary mission. In the second, yeah, uh, four victory points if they control one or more. And an extra four if they control more objective markers than your opponent. Okay. Wait, so you only need one objective? What the... Okay, um, at the end of the battle round, the player scores four victory points or more if the unit, if an enemy unit was destroyed that battle round, an extra four if more friendly unit, or if more enemy than friendly. Ah, okay. So, just keep killing things. Is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Alright, so, for secondaries, for Gene Sealer Colts, bring it down. It's kind of obvious, so I'll get two points for pretty much everything, except it's Warlord, which, uh... Oh wait, actually, no wait. According to this, three victory points for every guy I kill, and it'll be two, uh, four victory points for the main guy. Engage in all fronts. I mean, my army, pretty much, uh, if any army had the chance of doing it, it's this army. So, and then my opponent has selected. Well, basically, the mirror version, except it's assassination, since you have eight characters, and engage in all fronts, because I have a lot of units, I guess? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know what else it takes, so I took Engage. Because um, I think I can move around a little bit, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, just mirror version, I guess. Because um, you got a lot of whatever uh, characters, and my guys are pretty mobile. Mm -hmm. So I figured this might be the time to try it. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens. All right, so for deployment, uh, I was attacker, the Gene Sealer Colts, so they got to go first. Now I placed a 20-man block on the top left because the Nexos has the uh, enhancement that gives him and his unit infiltration and the CP regen thing. So place that there, taking that objective. And then the Gene Stealers have infiltration now, so I place them on the bottom right. And I'm, I'm going to assume that the characters... Because uh, units gain the abilities from characters, so I'm assuming the characters also gain abilities from the units. So, uh, it never says it anywhere, but just to be sure. And then apart from that, it was me spacing my guys out to be equally to go on either side. Rock grinders took proper positions where I believe they'll be somewhat saved. The rest of the neophytes are poised to take center and home objective and stuff like that. And some tricks up my sleeve. And that was entirely uh, the what I was thinking of because my opponent is entirely the same so it doesn't matter if he's uh, I'm not aiming for any specific units since they're all pretty much the same I'm just trying to make sure that I can at least ca uh, be able to respond accordingly yeah yeah um, so I didn't have too much of a plan um, I wanted to try and make sure my stuff was mostly hidden um, since you know I don't want to get shot. I don't know how much necessarily long range damage shooting he does have. But, um, you know, whatever. Um, but so I just kind of moved my guys out, and obviously I have my big boy down in the back, um, just because he has range. Um, not a lot of range, but he's got, you know, he's got some range. Um, but also, it'll help him kind of adjust and adapt accordingly. Um, and so, yeah, so it wasn't so much where he was placing it, I was literally just trying to. And so yeah, that was really as far as my plan went. All right, so who goes first? So since we're very new, it's hard to really gauge what's gonna happen. I don't know how tough really. Uh, I know the G uh, Gene Star Colts, they're, they have cardboard for armor, and I know that knights have really hard, like they're the highest damaging because they're giant behemoths. Mm. Um, I don't know what to think. Uh, so I'll focus entirely on objective. If I go first, I am taking the board, and you will have to m mow through armies of troops to get rid of them. That's what I do know. Well, I think that was the plan to begin with, though. Yeah. So. 
That, that's pretty much really, it. So, you're falling into my trap. <laughs> so if uh, I go first, I take the board, and you have to spend the rest of the game trying to slow through. If you go mm-hmm. first, uh, I'll have more targets. Your shooting is trash, because I don't think you really have that many targets, and I have some tricks up my sleeve and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, I If I wanted to go first, I think... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think? Um... Yeah, I don't know. I think, um, I think I want to go second. Um, it would open up a lot of targets for me, and it would let me, you know, I mean, I'd have to ride out some kind of initial damage train, but um, I'm not too, uh, too worried. Um, and yeah, I think going first isn't going to do a whole lot for me. I mean, I guess I could move a little bit and stuff, but again, I don't think it's going to do a whole lot for me. So, um, yeah, I'm more interested in probably going second, I think. All right, so let's play this. Two. Got a two. Four. I am going first, unfortunately. All right. Okay, there we go. Gene Steeler Colt, turn one. All right. Uh, command phase, battle shock phase, nothing. Movement phase. So, unfortunately, I ended the recording a little early, so you'll miss the last bits, but it's because, like, uh, trying to relearn everything and pull everything up is a bit difficult. So, essentially, what happened is uh, I took all the objectives. They are all mine, mostly. And essentially, I took the center, uh, the top. I had the green guys move back. I had the blue squad go take home base. Had the rock grinders run forward and take forward positions, and uh, don't show this yet. The green squad did move back, and the patriarch <coughs> ran forward towards his blue armagers. Also, to note, so the aberrants and the uh, hypermorphs or metamorphs are not there because at the end of deployment, I get to bring send three guys to strategic reserves for free because of the premise being there. Uh, so that was fine, uh, <coughs> essentially. Yeah, so. Um, that's why they're not there on the board, and that was the movement phase. Alright, for the charge phase, I declare a multi-charge against his blue Armager Warglaive and his purple Armager Warglaive. I need a 4. I felt that I would fail it, but luckily I didn't. I rolled an 8, and so they all got in. So let's, uh, let's really see how this goes. Alright, so, Gene Steeler's swing. Uh, so the Patriarch goes first, and he does... Four wounds to the Armager Warglaive because he has devastating wounds, but their toughness is ten. And so he wounded them on fives. Uh, one of his planes went to devastating wounds, so did total four damage to one. Then five Gene Steelers wailed on one and brought it down to uh, six wounds left, so did only two wounds. Then the other Armager uh, just got mortal wounds. They had a six up feel no pain, uh, saved one, so he got down to two or two wounds, so ten wound left on that. Then they swung back with their sweep attacks. They missed a ton of them, and then they proceeded to kill seven of my guys because I couldn't roll five ups to save my life. And yeah, that did not go how I expected. Gene Sealers are not as strong as they used to be. Alright, so for points, uh, I score oh, sorry, two points for engaging all fronts because I have three out of the four uh, sections. And uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. All right, you guys, so for movement, everything moved. So my, um, to be honest, I don't remember what it's called. My code chivalric, I chose reclaim the realm, which gives all of my units uh, plus one to move, advance, and charge. Um, and so all my all my armagers, uh, both Warglaive and Helverin, had 13-inch movements because of that. And so they're able to scoot pretty far across the board. Um, and then obviously my big guy went from, what is it, 10 to 11 inches, not that that's as relevant, but, um, and so yeah, so everyone kind of scooted forward, um, my war glaives all kind of moved up into ranges where they could charge stuff, um, and obviously shoot stuff with their, their guns and, and stuff, um, so, and then all my helverins moved into better shooting positions, um, to better shoot things. So, uh, yeah, so that was the movement phase, just kind of a lot of setting up, which was why I wanted to go second. It gave, it'll give me the better opportunities to uh, pick targets. 
um, because at this point, I don't know what kind of damage he's got, but it's this is the turn to make it all count. Um, so yeah. Alright you guys, so in the shooting phase, uh, a good bit happened and a good bit didn't really happen at the same time. Um, so, starting off, uh, my Knight Crusader was going to shoot at his uh, three Gene Stealers and his um, Patriarch, but then he used a stratagem to basically whisk them away. Um, and then, uh, so I was like, okay, well, I'll come back to him. Uh, so then I started shooting at other things. So I started with my Warglaive towards the bottom, shooting at his Goliath Rock Grinder. He did five damage uh, with his war, uh, Thermal Spears and Meltagun. Um, and then I moved over to the Armager Warglaive, standing on the uh, reclamation pool, just the, the bubble stuff in the middle. Um, he shot the Rock Grinder down to, I think he did like six damage. Mm -hmm or five damage, something like five or six damage. Um, and then the other Armager Warglaive at the top middle, um, he shot at the same one and he actually was able to KO it. He did eight damage, I think, mm -hmm. um, exploding it. Uh, one guy K uh, died t or took a mortal wound, popping out. Um, and then my, the Helverin uh, closest to my Night Crusader shot at his again. Oh, what? Oh, no, that's right, because the one guy didn't. So he shot at the orange squad again, um, and he uh, finished off that last guy. Uh, and then I had one guy shoot at his rock grinder again, uh, another Helverin, and he missed everything. Um, I think he did uh, four hits, went through, and then none of them actually wounded. Uh, and then I had one Helverin shoot at his squad all the way back on his home objective, and he was able to kill three guys. And then uh, one Helverin actually shot at the purple squad uh, and he was able to kill, I think it was four guys. Um, and so that was the shooting phase. So I was actually able to take off a couple of units, getting me four points for killing more things in this battle round. Um, now we had a few issues with, um, not issues. Um, so for instance, true line of sight um, is how terrain kind of works now, I believe. For tower, um, yes. And yeah, so um, the we had a little, we were trying to figure that out for some of my Helverins, um, but then um, yeah, so yeah, so it was an interesting shooting phase. Um, I did kill a couple of things, um, and uh, yeah. All right, you guys, so for charges, uh, the guy in the middle charged the purple squad, the, the blue armager, um, and he got in with a five. Um, so and overwatch. Four, but... Oh, yeah. Then you overwatched, um, and they, I don't remember what it was, but basically it was did six, six mortal, mortal wounds. wounds. Yeah, the Weber yeah. guns, so they basically act as flamers, and on sixes to wound, they do a mortal wound, and so six went through very good yeah uh so even with the feel no pain which is only six up um he failed all of them so he took six to the face but he is in um then on the bottom right i tried to charge my other my um <clears throat> armature war glaive down there into his rock grinder but he failed just barely he needed like another inch but it's two command points to re-roll uh to do the command point or command re-rolls so i didn't want to do it uh, and then the one on the top middle, Warglaive, tried to charge the green guys, rolled a 6. Um, he needed like an 11 or 12, so it was extremely unlikely anyway, but you know, you never know. Uh, and that was a charge phase, pretty uneventful. Um, and yeah. Alright you guys, so for the combat phase, there's only one charge that survived, or made it, so my Armager Warglaive charged in. Because he charged, he has sustained hits. So, uh, he had eight attacks, uh, so he swung, he also rolled two sixes. So essentially eight hits went through, uh, and then he needed twos to wound, and all eight went through, um, and, uh, he only was able to save one of them with his, um, feel no pain. Yeah. And so, uh, seven of his squad died, and then he swung back, um, and they were unable to wound. And that was the fight phase.
so relatively uneventful. Um, I don't know. I don't think he'll have to take a not bravery. What is it now? Battle shock. Battle shock. I don't think he'll need to take battle shock. We're also figuring out OC is apparently per model. I knew. Uh, so his OC is two. So each guy counts as two points or whatever. Um, so anyway, um, so yeah, so I don't hold this objective. I don't believe. No. You do not. Um, but I did kill a good chunk of the squad. Um, so that's nice. And we'll see how we go from here. All right, you guys, so four points. Um, I killed more units in the battle round, so I was able to get four points on my primary because it's the person who kills more gets four points. Um, obviously, I wasn't, I didn't get any from the objectives just yet, um, but I think as of right now, as it stands, I will have the more. Um, because it's so, you're the second turn, so yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so he still has his turn to take me off of him. But anyway, um, and then assassination, I was unable to get them because he retreated his patriarch. Mm -hmm. um, and he limited a lot of my shooting on his bigger squads. So, uh, yeah, so no points there, just two points for engaged in all fronts because I'm in three quarters. Um, and then uh, four points on my primary for the kills. And four and extra it. points because he had more kills than I did, essentially. All right. And that is the turn. All right. Some camera issues, so we missed a lot, but it's also kind of like referencing things to learn. But so essentially, uh, battle shock phase. No one needed battle shock. The purple squad almost needed it, but they have to be under half, and they had 10 men left. And so, movement phase. Green squad moved up to impose on the armagers. Uh, purple squad didn't do anything. Blue squad moved around to reposition and get cover. Uh, the Goliath Rock Rider moved up to engage the Armager with its one wound left. <coughs> then a lot of stuff happened. So at the end of the reinforcement step, I get uh, a, my a call uh, call the cult went out. So my blue so if it's a D3 bodies come back, but for neophyte acolytes, if they are on an objective, it's D3 plus three. So my blue squad at the home objective got to full health. My purple squad got six guys back. My green squad got five guys back, going back to full strength. Uh, and then uh, all my deep strikes came in. My patriarch and stuff came back at the bottom right. I didn't record it, but that's what... My hybrid metamorphs and my premise came in. Uh, they're fine. My acolytes up... T uh, I had my three deep strikes of the acolytes came in. Yellow team towards the middle. Teal towards the top left. Orange towards the his back zone. <laughs> To get in there and my abominance came in as well all in cover and safe well the abominance the deep striking guys they don't they don't matter and my orange squad uh so still learning gene sir cults i didn't know this is when the unit dies that i get the new marker to place out so uh they died after his movement phase so it didn't change anything so they were placed uh right around but he still has a movement phase to try to negate him and so i placed him down as a little marker and you'll see that in the shooting phase and that was the movement phase all right, so for the shooting phase, the green squad mag dumped the blue armiger with all their Webers did a total of like, t uh, what was it two mortal wounds to it? Sadly, because he had a feel no pain roll two sixes, ridiculous. And then uh, all the seismic cannons fired into them, brought them down to seven wounds. Then the teal squad of flamers, acolytes with their flamers, fired the armiger, uh, did one wound to it. Then, my yellow squad of Acolyte Hybrids fired at the blue Armager at the bottom right. Did nothing. Uh, then, my orange squad of Flamers at the top right fired at the Armager. Uh, did nothing. Then, the hybrid Metamorphs fired at him. Did four wounds. Uh, then, my Goliath Rock Grinder fired into Armager Warglaive with his clearance incinerator and did only two wounds, which my opponent then immediately saved. And that was my shooting phase. All right, so for the charge phase, uh, essentially what happened is I start from the top. The Abominant and his squad charged the blue Armager Warglaive and failed to charge, needed a nine. Then the Acolytes right beneath them charged, made it in. All right, then the Teal Acolytes at the bottom middle charged his blue Armager Warglaive on the bottom right and failed. Goliath Rock Grinder charged as well, and he did Overwatch, and that failed. I rolled a bunch of dice because I forgot the guys on the inside could still shoot or could have shot, so 
They ended up doing one more wound <coughs> to that Armager Warglaive. Then the Patriarch charged, made it in on a 10. And then the Hybrid Metamorphs charged, they made it in. And then the Orange Acolytes on the top right charged his war. The turn, or charge phase. All right, so for the fight phase, uh, essentially what happened is first the Rock Grinder went first because he was about to die. And so it also, I uh, didn't uh, record this, but essentially uh, at the end of its charge phase, uh, it gets to make like five, uh, five four ups. And for every four up, it uh, does a mortal wound. So that was actually good. I did like three mortal wounds to the guy. And so he swung with his attacks, six attacks, uh, needed fours to hit because he was really wounded, and then like fives to wound, and he managed to do some damage. And then he didn't interrupt, so my Patriarch went next. He swung, and the Armager Warglaive survived with one wound. And then my Gene Stealer swung the three of them with 12 attacks, and they failed to kill him because he saved him. <coughs> I should know they failed to do any wounds. Sorry, they rolled all fives, they didn't roll a single six to wound. It was terrible. Uh, after that, then my <coughs> hybrid metamorphs swung, and so essentially they can have, they actually have sweep or strike abilities, so they can have three strike, which is strength five, AP minus one, damage two, or five attacks at strength four, AP minus one, damage one, and I was like, I still have to roll six to wound, so might as well use the more attacks, so... A total of 50 attacks. I swung, and well, uh, because the, I did a bunch of wounds there, and then when I rolled, I did rolled a bunch of sixes to wound. Surprising. And then uh, I rolled damage, and they did more than eight wounds, which is all it had left from all the shooting, and it died. And then here's where things got crazy. Essentially, what happened was uh, he rolled a six to explode. All right, so he explode. He killed some of my hybrid metamorphs. He killed two of my gene stealers, and he ended up killing his other uh, armiger that was nearby, because it only had one wound left. And then that one exploded, and then that one killed some of my hybrid metamorphs, and that one killed the finished off the entire squad of gene stealers. The patriarchs left, <coughs> and then it killed my Goliath rock grinder. And so then my Goliath rock grinder before it went rolled. And he exploded, and then he, oh yeah, he finished, uh, he did three wounds to my Patriarch, who now only has three left. He killed uh, three of my Teal Acolytes that are to the left of him, and the unit that disgorged, that oh, was totally fine. Yeah, so uh, I did not see that coming. And so three vehicles exploded in a row, and that was... The combat overall went well for me, but uh, the Patriarch taking that damage was a bit harsh. Then it moved off uh, to the top left. I forgot that my yellow hybrids had a uh, heavy weapon for melee. I forgot to use entirely. I just used their occult claws. But they managed to do some wounds to it. <coughs> bring it down to under half so it'll now take battle shock. And then he swung back with his armiger in the center against my purple guys. And squished like five or six of them. Oh no, four of them. So I swung back and I did like uh, three or four wounds. I brought him down to four wounds left. And then his armor grew up top, squished two of my yellow guys, or yellow acolytes. And, uh, yeah, that was the fight phase. Alright, so for points, uh, things actually went really well. For primary, I controlled one control more, which is just four points. But I also killed a unit of his. And we tied, so I didn't gain an extra four. But I gained eight for primary. Then secondary, uh, bring it down. I destroyed three of his guys. And I got two points for each, but because their wounds were above 10, I got an extra bonus point for each. So now I'm at six points. Engage in all fronts. <coughs> I'm well within every single corner, thanks to my deep striking orange guys that are up there, who are more than likely about to be obliterated off the face of this planet. Uh, yeah, and that put me ahead, but my opponent has his second turn, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, all right, you guys. So, what had happened was in this the movement phase um basically my armager helverins kind of moved forward and scooted around uh so the green and red guys in the middle moved around to deal with the patriarch and his little gang of guys there uh the two war glaives in the middle well the one in combat in the middle stayed uh the other guy scooted around to join him the war the, the war glaive at the top stayed in combat and the two helverins 
um, next to him kind of scooted around, but also so that way that whole blob of things can't just get through. Um, my armager Helbrin on my home base, um, home objective, scooted back and kind of around to deal with that one squad of orange guys. Um, and then my uh, Knight Crusader came back in. Um, he spent a once per game ability to have the ones that my guy landed near um, move somewhere else. And then the other guys, just they just came in, the Pure Strain Gene Steelers. Um, and that was the moving phase. Um, I started with my Knight Crusader, who promptly wiped the squ squad off on his home objective. Um, then I went to my different uh, war glaives. So uh, the one in the middle shot at the squad in the middle. I um, actually don't know if he killed anyone. He killed two guys. Uh, he might have killed like two guys. Yeah. Then the one right next to him shot at the pink squad, the new squad that came in, um, killing one of them. And then the armager war glaive all the way at the top shot at the squad in front of him, um, killing two of them um then moving on to the hellbrins the two hellbrins right next to that guy shot at his big squad there they killed seven eight yeah something along those lines yeah you killed seven uh then yeah then the hellbrin on my uh home objective shot at the squad of five over there uh five wounds went through but he saved two of them on the feel no pains uh, so two lived, and then both of my other Helverins, um towards the right middle of the map shot at his Patriarch. Um, the first guy did uh, six wounds, um, but he passed them off to the Gene Steelers behind him. Yeah, it's a, a stratagem that eight. allows me. Uh, how it works is basically uh, if a character's out in the open, uh, I can basically, any time he would take a wound, another nearby squad would take a mortal wound in his place so he can still roll his saves and everything but because he had damaged three guns it's like a huge chunk of my gene sealers sacrifice themselves yeah mm. okay. um and then the next helverin did nothing he actually made all the saves uh and that was a shooting phase charge phase my armager in the middle who was not in combat charged in uh, and he made it quite easily uh, then I tried to charge the Armager Helbrin just to the right of the middle in, uh, just for extra damage, but he failed. Uh, he rolled like a three. Um, needed like an eight, so. But then one of the Armager Helbrins down, or up at the top, charged in. Uh, he overwatched, doing four damage. Uh, one was a mortal wound, and three was not. Seismic cannons. Yeah. And that was the charge phase. Uh, fight. So I hope that works. You can't interrupt. So I'll just... All right, you guys. So in this combat phase, uh, a little bit happened, but not a whole lot. So I swung with my uh, yellow Helvern in the middle, who uh, basically just swung on the big purple squad. Um, he was able to kill a handful. Um, I think it was like four or five. Yeah. Um, and then I swung with the green armager, the. Um, I guess this is actually the Helbrin. Uh, there was a Warblade. The, the other one is a Warblade. Anyway, uh, Helbrin at the top. Um, and he, he... I think he killed one, so it was not great, but he only had four attacks to start with. Um, and then I switched to the... Or then he swung back. Um, I don't think he actually... For points, um, I actually forgot to use the stratagem to single out a single unit. I was going to kill the character in the middle. Completely forgot, um, but uh, didn't care enough to go back around to it. Um, so I did get engaged in all fronts the full four points, though. Um, I also held one objective, giving me four points. Killed a unit, giving me four points. And killed more units, giving me another four points on the secondary. Or, I guess it's the primary, actually. Um, and so not great for points. Uh, I could have gotten four more. Uh, I literally just remembered to use the stratagem. But, you know, well, I think I could have gotten four. Who knows? Um, most likely. But anyway. Um, but other than that, though, good on points. Um, there's only four more points I may have been able to get, but not really. Um, there is a potential, but it wouldn't have worked out by holding more objectives. Um... But anyway, so that was it for points. Uh, so that was my turn. That was the battle round. Uh, and then we are going to call it here. 
um, because we have had a mass of technical issues with this uh, and we've been here way too long. And we're just so, going to say this is a draw because it's just like the game has constantly this, crashed. This, yeah. Yeah, it's I think it's crashed like 20 times now. Yeah. Um, and there's still enough up in the air that we don't like we don't want to call it, but we're basically rage quitting is what's yeah. happening right now. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, that's it because yeah, we'll we'll explain it in uh, at the end, but yeah. So we're calling it GG's here, a draw. All right. MVP LVP. So for me, Gene Steeler Colts. This was an interesting one because <coughs> um, essentially, uh, it's it was okay. Let's just LVP Gene Steelers. <laughs> uh, because it was against Knights. If it was against anyone else, these guys would have just butchered their way across the map. But strength four against toughness ten really hurt them. And it was the Patriarch that made them anything capable because it gave them devastating wounds. And so that was about it. But, like, they really did fail uh, horribly. I mean, it's pretty good that they came back they for a second round. Easy too. They have five up in vulnerable saves now. No longer four ups. Yeah. So uh, they were... Uh, I can see how they'd be very good. Infiltration is really strong. But as they stand right now, these guys in the game in the game uh performance wise against knights was the lvp mvp is a hard thing so there's a combination so characters combined with certain units is what made it strong there because gene Steeler cults is everyone working together there was not one single model or unit type that really was a thing like neophytes they were tar pits they're regenerating they regenerated me cp they regenerated uh they had feel no pains. They were just tanking. The Nexuses gave them the ability to have a free stratagem per turn and stuff like that. And they also held the abilities, uh, the enhancements to give them the infiltration and other things like that. The Icon Bears really essentially was uh, what uh, gave me, uh, well, the ability to regenerate about like, f at least four to six every single command phase because of that, or reinforcement step of the phase. My Primus was very good at giving re-rolls. If I gave him to one of these squads, their shooting would have been tremendous. But I wanted to test him out with a different squad. And also, uh, the way he works, uh, essentially, uh, he could... Uh, the the Iconoclast guys, the guys who give the 5-up Feel No Pain, oh yeah, which was these guys, 5-up Feel No Pain, uh, he cannot be in the same squad as a Primus. So that's kind of what the thing was. But a Nexos was able to join in. And so was also a Biophagus was also able to do that. So, like, keep that in account. The Metamorphs, really strong. They killed a t uh, Armager all by themselves with all their buffs and stuff. And Biophagus gave them sustained hits. So it's like, MVP, these guys killed a guy, got me points. But I'm going to have to give it to the Neophytes with a Nexos for free stratagems the stealth one was really good uh, can't shoot within 12 inches with the webbers really really good and the like just the uh whatchamacallit the I, the combination the five of feel no pain webbers uh neophytes with icon generating four to six every turn for me uh this was the mvp because it really held the line my opponent could not kill his way through and uh if they die they would all come back except the characters so these are my MVP, this combination. The 20 brick of troops. There's just a tar pit in the center of the board and on the top left. So what about you? Yeah, so I only had three different units. So, you know, not a lot to choose from here. Uh, so the Armagers obviously did the heavy lifting of the game. So LVP is the Night Crusader. I um, knew it. The first turn, he barely had any range to do anything, and he didn't really do very much. Uh, then he disappeared and came back in, and he wiped out one ten-man squad, um, just because. Um, so and that was literally all he did the whole game. He gave a buff one time, and it didn't even wasn't even useful. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure the game, if the game had gone on, he would have been able to shoot at and kill more things, but because we're rage quitting, essentially, uh, he didn't really have time to do anything. So LVP, just by lack of effort. 
MVP, I think, is the Warglaves. Like, both of the Hellbrands, they uh, did a good amount of damage. Um, the um, Hellbrands, the shooty ones, actually have a lot more shots. They have higher damage, um, higher strength, so that's pretty cool. Um, but the Warglaves having that eight attacks for the swings was, it was nice. Um, now, if they, if I had chosen a different big knight, they might have had some rerolls and whatever, and, and, um, you know, whatever, but, um, so I think it's actually the Warglaves, because they actually really kind of held the front there, um, on most of the map. Um, one of them took it to the face pretty bad with the chain explosion that happened, but, um, yeah, I would say it's the Warglaves from your MVP with a close second of the Hellbrands. <laughs> Three models. All right, so overall feelings of the game, we're going to go over, like, so unfortunately, uh, a lot of the 10th edition stuff, there, for those who don't know, there's sort of, like, been this uh, bug going throughout some of the models and stuff or for the uh, maps and things, so we're going to have to re-download everything. I didn't think it would apply to the maps, but clearly something's wrong because we have been crashing repeatedly probably we're gonna crash it while talking right here <laughs> but essentially so there's been a lot of weird strange issues uh, so technical issues we're gonna have to get it through but as far as the game uh, it could still keep going because the aberrants would have been able to go in and these guys they have transhuman or very strangely worded transhuman the abominant uh, I'm sad I didn't get to get him. He would have. Uh, this squad was instantly going to kill at least one other Armager right then. And also, fun fact: the Abominant, when he dies on a two-up, he comes back to life with full wounds. So that's pretty cool. <coughs> it seems he's the last to die. Yeah, and so like there was still too much up in the air. The Patriarch was still fine with enough Gene Sealers and this hybrid squad, which was going to generate three more guys because the Icon, because they were touching the objective, was going to go and just kill things. And so. <coughs> So I still had a very powerful counter punch, but it would have essentially come down to the small, minute details of points and stuff like that, things like that. And so it it, it would have been hard to say uh, who really would want. So sadly, we're we've been here for too long trying to deal with this stuff and rage quitting and like we're sorry that this is the first game we record because our practice game none of this happened. So yeah, so we're gonna have to figure out what the crap is going on. But yeah, but, alright, so moving apart from that, as far as our feel for the army, so me, Gene Stealer Colts. What do I think of Gene Stealer Colts? They are complicated still. <coughs> They're not as complicated, but essentially it's, I gotta remember to put this unit with this unit to do this kind of stuff. And to create the battle plans, and so, interesting I was able to create a good tar pit. I'm actually quite surprised at how tanky my army was surviving against what is one of the best armies in the game currently, knights, and I was killing them, uh, but uh, I had a lot of kamikaze units, like my acolytes coming in just to die, but they live again. <coughs> my gene stealers respond, uh, Lord knows my aberrants would, and so, like, uh, he didn't kill a single character, he was about to, finally, but... But yeah, but overall, surprisingly, it depends on the matchup. The Patriarch did not do good in this matchup. If he was facing off against some other army, he probably would have done much better. But he just wasn't doing that well. Um, it really depends on the matchup, but I was slowly grinding him down. And knowing what I know now, I probably would have focused my fire on one or two uh, Amagers at a time, weaken them down. And also, my deep strike stuff should have come in earlier. So, we can deep strike on turn one, technically according to the rules. It is only strategic reserves that come in on the board edge that have a restriction on turn two. So, so yeah. So, what do you think so far of the Knights? Well, um, I like them. Um, uh, yeah, so they are simpler, which is nice. Um, they, but... Honestly, they didn't lose out um, so much. Like, all the the big knights still have their bondsman ability, so a lot of the uniqueness of the knights is still there. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they lost all the different households and the, bu the buffs that came with that, so it just has two um, base quests, the, you know, their princeps, the, basically the titan chaplain thing. Uh, lost that ability 
um, they don't have that whole page of um, honorable quest things to do. Mm -hmm. um, so there are like a lot of things that they did lose, but the actual gameplay mechanics for the most part are, are pretty similar. Now they did get some buffs. So like the armager, their guns are way stronger. They're still only AP one, but I think they dropped AP globally from what I can tell. Um, so they're, they're, they're strong still. Uh, the new toughness stuff is ridiculous. Um, like them all being toughness 10, the Night Crusader, I don't even know what he is. He's probably like more than that, but um, yeah. But anyway, so um, I did like them. Um, I kind of liked having so many of these armagers. Now, obviously it did limit, I think some of my damage output. Um, but yeah, this guy know, wiped out a squad. Like, come on. Yeah, that was it. Um, and so I think I mean I like them like the the war glaives. They have all the melta, so they they can manage vehicles. They can manage uh, mass troops. The Helverins just have the eight shots. Now they're strength nine and three damage, so they can actually. They, if the wounds go through, they can actually do a good bit of damage to a vehicle or a character or something like that. But um, AP one is not so great. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know. I thought. I mean, I thought they were good. Um, a lot of the things that aren't here anymore. I don't know how much I necessarily miss them. I do like. I do like. I think because um, they tried to streamline the game, so like the knights lost out on some of their more unique uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. So like having to do those little quest things, otherwise you lose like honor points or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so they lost out on that, but I don't know how much that bothers me. Um, I think it, it does just make the game simpler to play. The uh, way I see it uh, after digesting all the armies is in ninth edition, every army was like a restaurant or a type of food, Mediterranean, Mexican, uh, European or like French German, that kind of stuff. And now in 10th edition, you go to these restaurants and they only have one thing on the menu. That's pretty much what I feel like. Yeah, you go to a Mexican restaurant and they only have basic tacos. No burritos, enchiladas, or anything like that. You... <laughs> yeah, they uh, yeah they took away all the houses, all the chapters. All the all flavor. The... Yeah. Right, all the the things and those are all things that people really did enjoy now yeah. i'm curious what that means as far as like paint schemes because um it's like you know there's a whole bunch of households so i wonder what when the actual books come out in the for this edition like yeah that's when things are going to start being unequal logos. yeah um but anyway so nights i did enjoy them um yeah i wish we could have played the game out but yeah. obviously it's, it just took way too long. Yeah, and um, we didn't know if we the, could keep playing because crashes. things were going bad. Yeah. Um, so in the end, the overall feeling I have is I'm actually happy that I was not immediately obliterated off the board. Uh, of course, I had to pull a lot of tricks and use a lot of my stratagems and thanks to the nexuses and abilities and stuff like that, regenerating CP and things like that, I was able to keep up. But uh, I had to bleed my CP to constantly stay in the game, even though I was still able to survive all this firepower, and I was still able to do damage. I was still able to hurt him, to kill him. It's like, yeah, he was uh, dying, and a lot of the other guys had tremendous wounds, and they were just about to kick the bucket. When the heavy hitters would have finally gone in, <coughs> I probably should have... Re it, it depends on the map, but maybe I could have probably put the aberrants right here and so that they would have easily just walked up and just bonked something from the very beginning waiting for turn three at best they could kill two units yeah so yeah. Uh, they all have five up uh, they have a five up and a four up feel no pain all of them so <laughs> yeah so overall uh 10th edition your models stay on the board a lot more especially gene Steeler cult yeah. since i keep bringing them back to life repeatedly so so, all right yeah. then, GG's, GG's, our next game. I don't know what we're bringing, or we may have a rematch of the same things again. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so we'll play uh, a couple of the simpler armies at first, and then we'll begin our rotation again of all the armies. Um, just un We'll just wait until we can actually come to grips with all the rules, at least for the addition. Yeah. Um, or until when we finally play like what we want and test everything. Because I'm going to go through all the armies that I want to play first before going to rotation. I might come back and do Gene Steeler Colts a second time. 
uh, because this uh, was a little unsatisfying. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. So all right then. So like the video, if you like the video, share if you want to share, comment if you want to comment, and more to come. Hooray, tenth edition. Bye.